Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today hosted by the Simpla Project. It is a pleasure for me to be with you today. My name is Giorgio Ranvelli. I'm part of the Covenant of Mayors Office and International Urban Cooperation Unit. And it is my pleasure today to discuss a little bit with you and to present the latest developments on the Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy in Europe, and specifically to dig a little bit more into how we are moving from the development and implementation of Sustainable Energy Action Plan to the development and implementation of Sustainable Energy and Climate Action Plans. To start, I would like to refresh our memory a little bit. What is the Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy? Well, it's an initiative, a movement uh, that brings together local and regional authorities that are committed on a voluntary manner to implement climate and energy objectives on their territory. These objectives are in line with the European Union strategy and targets. What is in detail this movement, this community of committed cities? Well, uh, it's first of all, a movement that is bottom up, shaped by cities and for cities, that shares a unique vision of a decarbonized and resilient future for cities, where citizens have access to secure, affordable and sustainable energy. It's an inclusive community that has been growing exponentially since 2008 and that now counts over 6,500 signatories and represent roughly 210 million of citizens across Europe. A little bit of the history, you probably know that this magical uh, initiative started in 2006 with the definition of what were the priority action for the EU into the EU Action Plan for Energy Efficiency. And finally, the launch in 2008 of the Covenant of Mayors Movement, where we have the decision of reaching out locally for the target of 20% of CO2 emission reduction by 2020. The family kept on growing in the future, and in 2014, there was a launch of the Mayors Adapt initiative that was looking not only into mitigating the effect of climate change, but also to adapting to the effect of climate change. In 2015, uh, new commitments came about when cities across Europe decided to scale up their commitment and their targets to meet the new objective of the European Union in terms of climate and energy, committing to reduce 40% of their CO2 emission by 2030 and bringing together the new commitments uh, on mitigation with the ones on climate adaptation, with a more integrated approach. So what are these new commitments that have started since 2015? The signatories that are signing up following uh, the, the, the new commitments in 2015 commit to reduce their CO2 emission by 40% by 2030 to increase their resilience through adapting to the impacts of climate change and to translate their political commitment into local results, developing action plans, and most of all, through reporting on the implementation of their actions. So not just commitment, but real life implementation and impact on the life of their citizens. We all are familiar with the different steps of the, of the covenant of mayors. Uh, we have three main steps. The, of course, the commitment phase where uh, local governments voluntarily commit to, uh, to sign uh, and become part of this family and to achieve the different uh, objectives set by the Covenant of Mayors with an with a official signature, uh, an official decision of the local council, followed by an, an initial phase in which uh, local governments carry out a baseline review and they define exactly what their um, ambition is. Step number two is the submission of their SACAP now, so their Sustainable Energy and Climate Action Plan, which has to be taking place within two years from the signing. And then finally, the step number three, where after the implementation and the monitoring, cities actually follow up on their commitment through reporting uh, what they have done and monitoring the different actions that they have put into place. The idea is to really try to boost an integrated approach. So we are looking into both climate mitigation and climate adaptation in a variety of different sectors 
that also respond a little bit to the different uh, um, tasks and the different roles that the municipalities across Europe are, are, are playing. So we are looking into infrastructure, into land use and planning. We are looking into biodiversity. We are looking into the economy of the cities. We are looking also into the agriculture, into the forestry, and it, into the all different public services that local governments are carrying out. So from energy and water supply to management, public transport and mobility, but also into things that are most cross-cutting, such as healthcare, civil protection, and different kinds of emergency services. And as I said before, this new integrated approach that brings together climate mitigation and climate adaptation really tries to look into all these different sectors and to see how the local commitment is really implementing action that can change the life of the citizens. The idea is to provide a real reference framework for action. Uh, the Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy in Europe looks into consistency and to boosting transparency. And the idea is to have a common reporting framework for all the local governments that are signing up to this different uh, context. But at the same time, we are working hard uh, to make sure that this framework is flexible, is adjustable, and that can be used by different local realities. We understand the diversity across Europe, and we want to make sure to have something that can cater for all the different needs. The, the idea also is to provide, through this initiative, high visibility. So the different uh, the different signatories have the possibility to update their profiles through the My Covenant area and to really showcase what they are doing and the best results of their actions. Finally, we want to provide a reference framework for evaluation. And this is to make sure that we have uh, data reported that are also validated by an independent scientific center. This independent scientific center is the one that belongs to the European Commission, the Joint Research Center, called JRC for short. And the idea is that there is a sort of a check on what is the compliance of the different signatories. So as you probably know, in case of compliance, signatures can be suspended. This is to make sure that we also, also have a quality check on the results and on the different achievements that are being carried out within the framework of such initiative. The community, of course, of the Covenant does not only include cities that, of course, are the primary signatories in, uh, across Europe, but also other actors such as regions, provinces, ministries that act as coordinator and as facilitator of these different groups. We also have different kinds of um, national facilitators, for example, Covenant of Mayors Clubs, where cities and other actors come together and promote the initiative. But we also have partnership with, uh, with academia and, and other kinds of partners, such as federations of companies, NGOs, different international networks, and a series of supporters that both of the European and global side bring an added value to the cities and to the towns and to the villages that are part of this initiative. Just some figures on preliminary successes of the Covenant of Mayors. We have over 7,500 signatories. We have signatories that have signed up directly to the new objectives in 2015, pledging uh, to, this, to really commit to this 40% reduction of greenhouse gas emission by 2030. We have 360 regions, provinces, associations that are currently active and supporting the initiative. We have over 5,600 action plans that have been developed until now, and we have an impressive average result of CO2 emission reduction of about 27% by 2020. As a stand from the last stock taking uh, of, the, of, the, of the Covenant of Mayors in Europe, as you can see, the figures are very exciting. Uh, we can count that as of 2015, the different signatories together have achieved a 20% uh, reduction of greenhouse gas emission, a 14% reduction on energy consumption, and that the share of renewables uh, across Europe has increased thanks to the signatories of four, four times. And then finally, we also have a 3% increase, uh, sorry, three times uh, increase of local renewable uh, energy production across Europe. So exciting developments. Now, the last step into the story 
of, of, of this covenant of mayors for Europe that I started telling you about a little bit until now, is that from 2016 and, success, and, and then after that in 2017, the covenant of mayors had decided to also get global. This was done through the merging of uh, two main initiatives, the global covenant, the covenant of mayors for Europe, the EU that we've just been speaking about, together with a partner initiative called the Compact of Mayors, these initiatives that are like-minded in the sense of trying to really boost the action at the local level to foster low carbon, resilient and affordable uh, energy uh, developments across the globe have come together to become the largest ever initiative uh, across the globe to really try to bring together cities into a coalition to fight climate change. At the moment, several secretariats and several offices and several communities are being built across the globe. In green, you can see the ones that have already been uh, running for a, for a few years now, including the European, of course, um, the European Covenant of Mayors. And we are now adding to our map a covenant, regional covenant in Japan, in China, in Asia, one in India, one in Latin America and the Caribbean, and one in North America. So the Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy Community is growing exponentially. So the general vision uh, that the European Covenant as well as the Global Covenant is putting now on, 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 on stage is a world where committed mayors and local governments together with different partners are accelerating action that is ambitious, measurable and reportable both on climate mitigation and on climate mitigation. And the idea is really to lead to a more inclusive, just low emission and climate resilient future. This is all with a main objective to support and to help meet and even exceed the objectives of the Paris Agreement. This vision and this action has three main pillars that are shared by this large initiative and by the European Covenant as member of this Global Covenant Initiative. The three pillars are mitigation, which of course has been running already for the Covenant of Mayors in Europe since 2008. Adaptation, a pillar that was added as mentioned before already in 2014. And now adding also access to secure, affordable and sustainable energy. This is the new, uh, the new part that also European cities will be trying to address for the future. So it's the next step for the future. But what do we mean by access to affordable energy for all? We in Europe, of course, uh, interpret um, this specific access to affordable energy for all closely linked to energy poverty. Energy poverty, of course, is something that has been effective, uh, affecting uh, local governments across Europe for a long time now. Um, it deals with several different uh, sectors and 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 several different uh, parts of the daily life of our citizens. We can see energy poverty in an inability of some of our most vulnerable parts of the society of not being able to pay for their heating, for their cooling, for their energy bill, but also on the way that they cannot maybe reach easily um, the public transport and to be able to have a proper mobility and a proper way to, to travel. So at the moment we can define, and this is just, of course, a, a working definition for the moment, energy poverty as the inability to realize essential capabilities, direct or indirect, uh, to access affordable and reliable energy services. May they be, as I said, energy in terms of electricity, heating, but also access to transport. So the idea that we have with this new pillar in the European Covenant of Mayors is to try to address this cross-cutting issue, but also looking into the real social impact and what kind of policies should be integrated in the activities that have been carried out already in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emissions, but not only going beyond that and trying to see how we can affect really the life of our citizens and especially the more the most vulnerable uh, parts of our populations. 
For this specific pillar, uh, the Covenant of Mayor's Office is currently working together with the European Energy Poverty Observatory, which is an initiative, again, of the European Commission. It has been funded, and you can see the link over there, to support member states in their effort to combat uh, energy poverty. The idea is really to improve in measuring, monitoring, but also into, sh into sharing good practices and best practices on how to tackle the issue of energy poverty. So this is a new space, and I would definitely invite you uh, to, to have a look at the website and to, and to see uh, how things are shaping at the moment. To make sure that uh, we really cater for the different needs to develop if strategies that are efficient for the pillar on energy access, a group of practitioners will be consulted the same way that a group of practitioners is being consulted also for anything that happens with, for example, the revamping of the different templates. And we will talk about how now the SEAP and the SECAPs and this evolution have been carried out. But this group of practitioners, which are a group of experts uh, that can come from cities, from frontline cities, from regions, from different kind of supporter and a different kind of expertise, both on mitigation and adaptation across Europe, come together uh, to really contribute and consolidate uh, the development of our initiative. Uh, these groups of practitioners are invited to give their input, for example, on methodological as well as strategic developments as relevant in the future. And as they were consulted for uh, the development of the SECAP from the SEAP side, from this now they will be consulted also on the access to energy pillar. So the next step will be not only to consult, of course, uh, with, with, the, with the petitioner group, but also to support the development of capacity in terms of how to address energy poverty, really focusing on learning from real life, real life expertise and experiences, but also to develop different kinds of indicator. And this is a more long-term uh, work that we have kicked off and it will continue uh, until the end of 2018. Trying to look for indicators that will be then, uh, of course, reflected into the activities of the different signatories in the future. Looking for something that is cross-cutting, easily manageable so the cities can properly really act and also report on their actions uh, also on this pillar. In, in an easy manner, but also looking into something that is not compulsory, at least for the beginning, to ease in the process of this third pillar that is being addressed. Now, after this overall introductory phase, and I will invite you please to start already from now to pin down any question that you may have. As you know, after the end of my presentation, you will have the opportunity to type your questions into the chat box and and to and it will be my pleasure to to provide you uh with, with answer and maybe also hopefully with some inspiration for your activities for the future so please start already pinning down any question that you have on this general introduction now we will move on on looking into a little bit more what happened in this transition between the sustainable energy action plan and the seca the sustainable energy and climate action plan. So, first of all, just to refresh your mind, all the signatories of the former Covenant of Mayors that is addressing exclusively energy and climate change mitigation, they have all committed to prepare a sustainable energy action plan. This is valid for all the commitments up to 2020. These signatories of the new Covenant of Mayors, so all of the ones that have decided to renew their commitment to the new phase or have signed up simply after the new Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy was launched, have instead committed to prepare and to implement this SECAP, the Sustainable Energy and Climate Action Plan. And the idea is that this new plan addresses both the climate mitigation side and the climate adaptation side before 2030, so with a new timeline. The plan, the SECAP, includes an assessment, of course, of the current situation, for example, the baseline emission inventory, and this, of course, is common to both the SEAP and the SECAP, but it includes also a risk and vulnerability assessment for the adaptation part, which was not included in the SEAP, but now is present for the SECAP. 
of course, clearly identified goals and targets. And then finally, the different measures that are planned with a time frame, the responsibilities, the estimated impacts, and also an assessment where possible of how financially they will be carried out. So how they concretely will take place. So the new template um, is structured to provide a minimum reporting, set, set of reporting requirements. So this is the general uh, structure that you can see. Um, the template is available, as you probably know, uh, already for, a, for quite, a, quite, a few, quite a few months uh, in the resource library as a document, an Excel file that can be downloaded. But uh, I'm also very pleased to let you know that an online version has now been launched and I will show you uh, where to find it later on. It's been uh, now made available on the new and revamped uh, uh, my covenant area where you can find it already online and you can already start filling uh, your different uh, information there. So the structure is um, providing you the minimal reporting requirements that you can see um, and specifically for the setup you are supposed to submit your plan within two years from the signing of the commitment and as you can see it also refers again to both the mitigation side and the adaptation side with different sets of indicators, as well as different possibility to upload both uh, your general actions and some key actions that are specifically important for the uh, achievement of your, of your plan. So the objective of the template is in general to provide you an opportunity to both identify and, ac and assess uh, your local climate challenges and priorities, this is both on the mitigation and on the adaptation side. It has the objective, of course, to monitor and report uh, the different progress towards your commitments. And this is also something that should be helpful for you in order to see where you stand with your city in terms of uh, putting into place and achieving uh, the different results that you set for yourself in the different uh, commitments that you have pledged for in, in this phase. It's supposed to help you informing and supporting also the decision makers, seeing where you stand and what are, for example, your different vulnerabilities. It encourages to assess for yourself where you stand at the different steps of the way. It has the objective to help with communicating results to the general public because it gives you the opportunity to draw some nice graphic uh, and graphic element uh, and, and you know, to be able to share them with, 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 your, with your colleagues, to share them also with the general public to see where you stand. Then finally, it wants to help you um, facilitating a self-assessment, but also to find some pointers on how you can share and discuss with your peers on the different achievements, but also on the, challenging, on the challenges that you are facing together. And then finally, it should help you to demonstrate practically with numbers and how you are really achieving, achieving your objectives in terms of policy making and in terms of strategy implementation. So I will take you now through the different uh, new uh, parts of, of the template. For the greenhouse gas um, inventory part and especially for, let's say in general, for the mitigation part, the template is very similar to what was already there before. Uh, the idea there was mostly to try to um, look into how to simplify as much as possible the requirements and, and to make it more user friendly. So we paid a lot of attention mostly to the interface to make sure that it was easier uh, for, for cities to fill in uh, their reporting. Uh, this was done, of course, under the suggestion of practitioner group that I introduced briefly before. One interesting tab uh, is the key actions. Former, the key actions were this benchmark of excellence. Those are specific actions that you want to, to mark as important, that you want to specifically pinpoint among all the different actions that you've been carrying out for your mitigation side. And we go a little bit more in depth into what you will be doing into these key actions. For example, there is a stronger emphasis on the different implementation timeframes into how you plan to finance your action so that you can see 
uh, you can really show what is the what is the impact that this key action may have. You are free to choose, of course, what your key actions are. They can be the ones that are, for example, the most scalable, the one that have a larger impact, the one that correspond to the larger uh, financing um, effort that you're going to put into the implementation of your of your plan. So it's up to you. But this is a, a quite interesting new new tab that you can uh, look into and, and really try to, to express more in detail what exactly your key action will be implementing. And then the real innovation comes, of course, on the template side that deals with the adaptation side. So the first one of the tab that you will find in terms of uh, adaptation is the adaptation scoreboard. So the adaptation scoreboard is a bit of a gives you the opportunity to really assess a little bit what is your state, what is your status. So it's a self-check sort of uh, uh, tab where you have the opportunity to carry out a qualitative assessment. Um, so you will see that on the left side, you will find the different steps uh, of the adaptation cycle that you, that you, you would we suggest you undertake. And for each one of these steps, there will be some sub actions that we suggest you to carry out. And we ask you to include whether you have carried them out or not, give an idea of your status at the moment, and of course, to include any comments for the future. And this is a clear example of how we think that this, um, this tool can really help you, not only in, in monitoring your progress, but also in really understanding where you stand and taking decisions on where you want to go with your different strategies. The second tab that I want to highlight for you is the risks and vulnerabilities tab. Uh, here you will find different types of climate hazards uh, that we suggest to you. These include, for example, extreme precipitations, sea level rise, and you will have to understand which one of them are applicable for you. And through the drop-down menu, you will be able to identify what is the level of risk that you're facing, if you expect any change in terms of intensity, any change in terms of frequency, and what is the timeline uh, that, you, that you're planning for yourselves. You will find also a column where you can outline different kinds of indicators related to the risk. Uh, there is, of course, an, uh, an attachment uh, to our template that will provide you an overview of possible um, risk-related indicators. All of them are suggested. You can also, of course, indicate your own, but just to give you some guidance on what type uh, of risks you can, you can really um, yes, identify and what kind of indicators to use. So I think this is quite interesting as a new development. Finally, one more tab that we have added is the one that relates directly to the adaptation actions. So here you again have a, a series of different drop down menus that you can go through. Uh, you will have the opportunity to choose the sector. So you can see, for example, here, um, some of them are, are, um, are already identified. It could be on the waste sector, agriculture and forestry, health, environment and biodiversity, all of these different sectors that have been added into our now integrated approach um, to climate mitigation adaptation are listed there. And you will have the opportunity to identify who is the responsible body, the, the responsible department, what is the time frame for the different actions, give us a short description uh, of your action. You will be able to insert all this information the same way that you have been doing for the climate mitigation side and to really give us an overview. You are required to include at least three uh, adaptation actions within this. And again, the key actions are simply more detailed, the same way uh, that we ask you to identify what are, which one are your uh, key actions for mitigation. This is happening also for the adaptation side. Finally, one interesting uh, feature is that you are not only requested to or suggested to uh, include your adaptation, but you're also asked to upload any documents 
that is relevant, any strategy, any policy, any plans that is relevant to adaptation. So we know that in some parts of Europe, for example, cities have been already required either by national regulation or simply uh, already are, um, are more used to uh, develop climate adaptation plans. And of course, they are invited to upload these documents. But in other parts of Europe, for example, we have a very good bulk of important initiatives that contribute extremely to not only climate adaptation, but also to address different kinds of risks and vulnerabilities. And all of these actions and all of these plans are definitely relevant. So for example, any plan that has to do with uh, dealing with hydrogeological or seismic um, issues, uh, any plan that has to do with safety and security, in terms, for example, of flood management, all of these are relevant actions that can be, of course, uploaded and included into your reporting. Now, let's go to the nitty gritty uh, of, of the submission process of, of this new setup template. So the, the deadline, as I mentioned already, uh, remain one year uh, for the cities that are still um, required or suggested to, um, to submit their own sale. So the one that has still committed uh, to the 2020 framework. Uh, for the cities that instead are submitting their SECAP, so that have signed up to the new uh, Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy objectives in the framework of the 2030 um, um, targets, they have two years following the date of local council decision to submit their SEAC, and this is indicated also in the adhesion document, of course. The SECAP can be submitted. Um, first of all, you can, it can be uploaded uh, as a, an Excel file, as a document. Uh, you could download it from the library for the past month, but it also now is available in a beta version through the My Covenant. So it will be available to be filled in online. So the new um, the new online My Covenant, and you can see a screenshot there, is being revamped both in terms of uh, look and feel, but also it, is, it provides a simplified interface and in increased user friendliness. Now, at the moment, um, uh, the, of course, the transition is still in phase, so uh, there will be very soon the possibility to see whatever you submit in real life uh, time, but for the moment, it takes up a, a, around a couple of days to see, of course, your, your um, new submissions uh, online. But we are testing it out and we really want to encourage you to also look into the different new features that are available, not only through the reporting, but also the different discussion forums that are there, the different re resources that are available in the resource library, and to really try to also use your profile and use this instrument as much as possible to communicate and to learn and to exchange with your, with your peers and with your colleagues across Europe that are facing similar challenges to you and are committing to implementing ambitious and transparent actions in the same way that your cities are doing so. Now, inviting you again to pin down any questions that you may have on the, on the new SECA template and on the process and the transition uh, that has been uh, kicked off in this period, uh, moving from this focus on mitigation to this more integrated mitigation and adaptation way of reporting and monitoring your success. I would like to remind you all a little bit of the different support and engagement opportunities that are possible. So a little bit of homework, but also an invitation to talk to us. We spoke a lot about the different steps um, that we ask you to self-assess uh, within the, the SECAP template. We invite you all to have a look at the urban adaptation support tool that was developed for the Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy that will provide you with some guidelines on what is entailed into each one of the different phases and steps um, of your development of an adaptation strategy for your city. So, Check it out. That's uh, my invitation. We have also put a. I've also put an emphasis on how, for example, especially for key action, we're asking you to give us an idea of how 
you're planning to implement uh, your different activities and how you're planning to finance them, for example. So we invite you to check out, again, our funding instrument quick reference guide to also see how your SEAP and your SEAP now uh, can, can find some more opportunities to really finance your action uh, for, for the next uh, upcoming year until 2020. So again, encouragement to check this one out. I already mentioned the revamped uh, My Covenant and the different opportunities, not only to start reporting for your setup there, but also to look into exchanging with your peers through discussion forums, the resource library with different kinds of resources. So another invitation here, this is a good support instrument for you. Please make sure you take advantage of it. I also would like to remind you of all the different uh, uh, possibilities uh, to learn more about how to implement uh, your action, how to report, how to uh, monitor your activities, how to fill in your setup template, how to, for example, boost specific ac actions in specific sector, mobility, energy, different kinds of fields. The Covenant of Mayors is providing you with a series of webinars taking place regularly, as well as workshops, not all of them in English, many of them in your own national language, many of them taking place either online or even in your own countries. So always keep up to speed uh, with, with the different activities. There is a lot of opportunities for you, not only to learn, but also to exchange and to give us an idea of the great work that you are doing. We also invite you to take advantage of the different working groups and of the different city twinning programs that are launched regularly and that you can apply for. Finally, very, very important, support the signatories, a direct line with us, um, the help desk. We have a general help desk, as you probably know, but also some country specific one that will be able to give you answers also in your national language for Italy, Spain, Germany and Austria. We also have, uh, of course, uh, very close cooperation as Covenant to Mayor's Office with the Joint Research Center uh, that provides a first, uh, second line um, technical support. So any question that you might have on the specificity on how to fill in the template, on how to collect the data there for the different sectors, any doubts that you might have while um, the, the, the guidance document for the setup is, be, is being prepared, please don't forget that we are there to help you and we will be more than uh, delighted uh, to be at your service and try to support you in this process and in this transition moment. Finally, one more general opportunity that I want to highlight to you. I already mentioned that um, the Covenant of Mayors in Europe is part of this larger family now, the Global Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy, which is setting up uh, Covenant of Mayors regional offices and communities across the globe. Uh, one specific survey is now made public on the Global Covenant of Mayors website, looking into possibilities to have some pointers for our reporting framework that could be applicable for all the different regions. And it includes recommendations that look into greenhouse gas emission inventories, uh, how to set targets, how to assess vulnerability and risk, but also into the, the development of um, plans for both climate mitigation, adaptation and energy actions access. This is a consultation opportunity that is coming up and is being rolled out globally. So should you be interested in looking at the survey and provide your feedback and your recommendations, this is a great opportunity for doing so. And then finally, I would like to invite you to visit our revamped website, same address, all new look, and to really have a look at it and see how, how um, the different resources and calen in the calendars of events, everything is now showcased. And again, make sure that you bookmark it in your, um, in your browser. It's very, uh, it's very lovely website and it would provide you with a lot of ideas and a lot of opportunities to, to engage and to learn more about this transition moment, how the next uh, um, steps will look like and 
to engage. So that's it from my side. Thank you very much. Please do not hesitate to contact us and to contact me should you have any questions. And I look forward to, to exchanging with you and I'm opening now the floor for questions. Thank you very much. Good, uh, good morning, everyone. I hope you enjoyed our, um, our webinar today and it was useful for you. Um, I've already seen quite a few questions uh, coming my way. So I will start from the bottom. Um, the first question that I see comes from Maria Caladami, who is asking us if it is possible to utilize an indicator that is not included uh, under the tab adaptation indicator. And if so, where those indicators can be listed. So yes, um, there is a tab indeed that uh, lists several types of indicators that you are suggested to use. But if you want to use a different one, this is also possible. If you go into the setup, into setup sorry, template in the tab uh, risk and vulnerabilities, you will see that under column I, uh, there is a, um, a specific column that looks into risk related indicators and you are um, able to um type down you, the indicator you have been using just there so i hope that is helpful uh the second question that i've received is from a, a colleague benata bahel i'm sorry if i'm not pronouncing your name correctly um the question is about where is it possible to find um the setup template so the setup template can be still downloaded from our resource library and uh, you can find it there you will see that there is a a, a new file uh, uploaded there marked as uploaded in 2018 so you can you can access it there um next question okay uh, the next question is asking us, um, just a moment. All right. So the next question is asking us what happens now with the globalization of the covenant to the cities that have signed up to the European uh, covenant of mayors. Well, all the cities that are part of the European covenant of mayors, so the covenant of mayors of climate and energy, are automatically uh, part of uh, the global covenant of mayors. So there is no change from you for, from this point of view. You just have access to a wider community of cities and local governments like-minded that can share uh, information with you and exchange with you. So it's a, just a larger family to this extent. Okay, um, just ooh, many questions. Okay, so I see quite a few questions actually on the, um, what happens if you have already a setup in place and you want to, uh, to start developing uh, a setup. So of course uh, you need to be adherent with your with your timeline. As you know, after this uh, after the signing, you have one year to submit your setup and two years to submit your setup. If you have recommitted to the new uh, to the new um, commitment uh, targets, you should of course try to adhere with that. So for the moment, um, until now, um, because online. Uh, on our extranet and our my covenant platform it was not possible to submit the full the full setup whose template we uh, just recently finalized it is possible indeed for you to upload all the different materials that you have already been drafting and have to do with the strategies for your own uh, for your own uh, city for example in terms of reducing reducing uh, um, hazards uh, for example on the seismic plants or hydrogeological uh, plants anything that is relevant to to the climate adaptation side you can already start to to upload um for, of course for the next round we would definitely would encourage you to start reporting using the new template uh for the setup this is of course in line with what we 
what we explained before, uh, it's an opportunity for you not only to report on your activities and what you have been doing, but also to be able to monitor and to have a better understanding of the different policies that you have been carrying out and what kind of impacts they have. It's also a very good tool uh, to start a sort of a self-assessment for the different achievements that you have put in place. So I would definitely encourage you to have a look at the template and look into how you can start to, to already foresee how to fill that one in and to be able to respond to the different questions also on the adaptation pillar. I have another question about uh, the third pillar on, uh, on, en on energy poverty, on access to uh, safe and affordable and sustainable energy, which I briefly explained before. How does that reflect specifically, I'm being asked, on how will that reflect, sorry, in the, in the new um, SECAP template? So as I said at the moment, we have started discussing on this um on this topic together with the EU observatory for energy poverty uh, we are very much at a um, startup phase in which we are trying to assess exactly what is the definition that we want to give to um uh, to energy poverty to energy poverty and to access to energy in in europe so we are in this consultative phase for the moment we hope that we will have a few indicators that will be developed towards the end of 2018 um, we hope also that through the rest of the year we will be able to start already doing some capacity building and some uh, some activities the cities could draw upon uh, to learn a little bit more about this pillar. Uh, specifically, the indicators that will be developed that we have in mind will be, of course, at least at the beginning, not compulsory, just to ease in the process for the future. But also, uh, the idea is to have something that is manageable, of course, for local authorities and they can easily be reporting on and they can easily include into their um into their process of, of of planning so this is the this is the question uh, all right so i have i received a question about uh, uh, smaller municipalities uh, that are just uh, um, that might not have the capacity at the moment to deal with the adaptation uh, part of our new cycle. So um, we are very well aware uh, that there is, of course, difference between uh, not only um, the level of, of engagement of different towns and municipalities across Europe on the adaptation pillar, but also on the phase in which these different cities and towns might be in developing such a plan. So um, mindful of that, my first uh, reaction would be, if you're looking for resources, I would like to encourage you to, first of all, visit our library, but also to access your profile through my covenant. And in there, you will find quite a few new features that I mentioned briefly in my, in my presentation before, including, for example, um, discussion forum, where you can find cities that are facing similar challenges and, and you can start sharing with them on the activities that, you are, uh, that they are carrying out and the challenges that you are both facing. There is, in addition, of course, the urban adaptation tool that was developed specifically to support you into looking into the different steps on how to develop your, um, your adaptation uh, plan, but also into looking exactly what kind of risk and vulnerability um, issues you might be facing. So support you through the different steps of the vulnerability assessment. So again, I would invite you to visit the website and to and to have a look at it of course and and see how this tool can be helpful for you there are also another a large wealth of european projects uh, european funded funded projects that of course are dealing with adaptation and supporting cities of different sizes in uh, trying for example to survey uh, the different risks they you are facing uh, you're facing in your in, a, in your local context so again i would encourage you to have a look and to see what are the, what these projects can bring to the table and how they can support you of course as covenant of mayor's office we are always happy to to point you in the right direction so please feel free to send us an email and i'm happy to uh, to follow back with um, um, to follow up with some with some direct links to these different tools Okay, so I have a question about filling in um, 
the information concerning funding and financing, um, asking specifically to what extent uh, this needs to be detailed. So my um, my answer will be, um, of course, it is up to you to fill in uh, this uh, this cell. And I understand that it might not be always possible to be 100% uh, precise on the, on the financing and funding that you are looking into, especially if it's a mix uh, of different sources. Mm, again, this information is there to help uh, support the evaluation of the concreteness of the plans and of the activities that you are uh, putting into your into your sale. So it, it gives us an indication, and it gives our colleagues in uh, in, the, in the JRC, of course, who are doing the validation, an indication of the concreteness and of the scale of the project. I think when you are feeding in that uh, that specific cells, you should always keep that in mind. And uh, overall, I would also like to share this point with uh, with all of you. Um, we we do understand that there is indeed a burden, especially for smaller municipalities, in completing this kind of data and the information. And we just want to reassure you that um, behind the idea of compiling all of this, it's not the necessity of having data for the sake of data, but it's really about providing you a consistent framework that can support you into implementing your action in a most uh, in a more efficient efficient manner, but also to give you a sound basis to see whether what you are pledging for, what you are planning to implement, uh, would actually be something that would uh, have an impact on your own territory. So we are very, very thankful, of course, for the time and the effort that all of you are putting into filling in this template and this monitoring. And we hope that those are uh, good instruments also to support you in your policy making process and your implementation. So I think this is also very important to, 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 to share with you. Next questions. Okay, um, I have seen a few uh, a few people in the audience are asking me about uh, um, possibility to receive training on how to uh, to prepare uh, to fill in this setup template. So yes, uh, we are regularly organizing a series of uh, webinars as well as a series of um, workshops across Europe. So the invitation from my side will be for you to always keep an eye on the um, on our website, on the events calendar and on the news calendar and news session where you can see where and when um, it will be possible for you to participate to any of these trainings. Of course, if you have a specific need or if you uh, if you think that, for example, it would be particularly useful for your country, uh, in your country to have such a, such a training, you we always are happy to also hear your feedback and to understand where your needs are. So please contact us and just let us know that you feel that this is something that it would be particularly helpful for you. Um, we can also always draw upon our community, as I explained before. We have territorial coordinators, we have supporters across Europe, as well as other partners and other ambassadors uh, that from other cities that are engaged in the, in the initiative, they will be happy and ready to, to also help uh, with this. So uh, I think your feedback is very important to us. Please let us know and we will try to see how to how to how it is possible to help all of you uh, in making sure that this setup template can be easily understood and of course also implemented. Um, easily. I'm going through the different email. Okay, uh, someone is asking for my email address. Of course, that was not included in the presentation, so I will give it to you gladly. It's Georgia with G I dot Rambelli at eumayors.eu. Please feel free to, to send me your questions there. I'll be more than happy to answer or to redirect my questions to, uh, to the person um, that will be the most, re the most relevant uh, to support you.
So I have a question uh, about uh, making the transition in, uh, from 2030 to uh, from 2020 to 2030 uh, objectives. Yes, it is possible, and uh, a few cities have already decided to do that. Um, you can recommit to the new objectives. Please just. Uh, as I mentioned before, be mindful of the fact that, of course, the, uh, there will be impacts on the on the timeline for your uh, for the submission of your of your uh, of your plan. Okay. So I have a question about the timelines um, on the submission of the of the SEAP and on the submission and monitoring on, of the SECAPs. I have actually a few of them. So um, until now, as you know, every time that you um, have uploaded your information in your profile, in your extranet, you were able to see basically what you had uploaded and the results virtually, let's say, on real time. Uh, we have been going through um, a quite extensive transition at the moment to make sure that we could cater for uh, a platform that was more user friendly and more helpful for you uh, and also able, of course, to cater for uh, the new template and the new reporting um, for, for the Covenant of Mayors on Climate and Energy. So at the moment, the uh, information that you are uploading, it's not available uh, immediately in real time in your profile. So don't worry if you don't see it immediately. Um, what happens is that uh, currently we are refreshing and uh, updating the pages regularly. So you you will see that uh, you, you will see that in a, in a reasonable uh, in a reasonable time frame. Um, in terms of the submission, if you submit your 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 setup, of course, uh, we we will, um, as before, uh, analyze and validate it together with the with the, with the joint research uh, center. They will take it take the lead on that, and the roughly it should be around six months for you to 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 receive uh, an answer on uh, on your um, on your template. Yes, I also have a question about receiving information on real life examples of um, baseline emission inventories and how they've been developed. Of course, we have a lot of best practices that we can that we can share with you and also some 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 pointers. So yes, indeed, please feel free to to send this, send me an email um, and, and we will try to, to, to share with you something that is useful. I think I've gone through all of the questions. If there is any other question, we still have a couple of minutes. I'm more than happy to uh, to respond to you. I take the opportunity in the meantime just to. Um, Thank you very much for attending today and uh, reminding you again my email address. It's georgia.rambelli at eumayors.eu. Please feel free to share your questions. Should you have any, any other question afterwards, I'm happy to follow up and to give you also a more detailed answer uh, afterwards. Okay, it looks like... Uh, Everyone is happy. I hope it was useful. It was a pleasure for me to, to be with you virtually today. And uh, we look forward to receive your feedback. We look forward to, uh, to hearing from you and always happy to help you. Please count on us at the Covenant of Mayor's Office here in Europe to support you and to walk you through this exciting transition that we are all going through together. So thank you once again, and thank you very much to the Simpler Project, of course, for giving us this platform to share and exchange with you. I wish you all a lovely day. Thank you.